everybody. Welcome to the Procure Smarter podcast. Today, we're going to talk to Mr. Sean McDonald, who is a businessman and a consultant with a focus on mindfulness. So that's different and interesting. So stay tuned. Hi, Sean. Hello there. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you, Sharon? It is very nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. Thank you for having me. Um, so I just want to do a little kind of legal thing. This is video. Are you good with that? Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, perfect. All right. So one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to you was because on your profile, you describe yourself as generally delightful. And <laughs> I wanted to talk to somebody who saw themselves in that light. Well, I... <laughs> I, I like to think of myself as generally delightful. So I thought, you know, that was uh, as you're reading through and, and I'm new to the, the podcast arena. So I'm thinking to myself, no one really tells about themselves and, and what someone can expect. So uh, that, that's wonderful feedback. And I appreciate that very much. Of course. OK, so let's talk. you describe yourself as a businessman and a consultant who focuses on mindfulness to manifest profitability. And those are two ideas that don't normally come together. You don't normally see business and spiritual mindfulness. So I wanna to talk to you about how those two ideas came together. How did you get started in that? Like what brought this into your life? Sure, exactly, Sharon. The, 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 the genesis, I think, of bringing this to the, the public's awareness is my business partner, Fatima Teixeira. She and I had crossed paths a few years ago and have worked on some different projects. Uh, we met when I was consulting on a project that she was working on, and we were very like-minded when it comes to being uh, mindful in a sense where you are aware of your thoughts, you're aware of how you're feeling and how that really affects everything else in your life. Right. So there's something out there in the world called emotional intelligence in business. Do you kind of equate it a little bit like that? Or is it deeper than that? I think it's deeper. Uh, emotional intelligence is, I, I, I would define that, and I haven't seen the definition, but it's trusting your gut. And I think is, is someone you know, like yourself that's been in business for, for many years, you, you have that feeling about projects, people, ideas, different things like that. So in your emotional intelligence, you're trusting your gut. If you're going to be a mindful creator on purpose, we would want to, first of all, develop a positive mindset. How do you get from where you're at in your energy level, your mindset level to where you want to be? And I think that most authors, most speakers come from a place of a high energy place, a high energy feeling. And so if you're high energy and you're very uh, motivated and you're very positive thinking, sometimes it's difficult for people that may not be exactly super having a great day or, or super high energy to really connect there. So what we try to do is explain the process of basically being a little more mindful in what we're doing with meditation, affirmations, um, quieting your mind, getting inspired ideas, Sharon, and then taking inspired action. Wow. Okay. So for years, I worked for um, an Indian family in hospitality. And um, one of the owners, uh, his name was JP Rama, had told me a long time ago that he starts every day in the office, not in his home. He gets to the office, he closes his office door, and he meditates for five minutes every morning. And he swore that that was what helped him like get so much accomplished throughout the day. And meditation originated in India. And I think that uh, that culture really understands, explains, and teaches from a very young age the benefits of meditation. And so, yes, if you're quieting your mind, 
and you're in a place where, where does the idea come from, Cher? Where is the spark of something new? Uh, you know, how do we, how do we fix the, the shipping container problem? What do we do for uh, this idea, another logistics idea? Any idea, any problem that is, is, a, is a, that humanity is looking to solve in business? And what are we doing in business? We are solving problems at a reasonable profit. So we're incentivized to solve problems, but we're not taught about how to really begin that process and to get those ideas flowing and then having the confidence to take inspired action from there. I, I, I hate to even think about all the really neat ideas that I thought about and said, ah, that's not going to work. So we want to, we want to be able to, to, for people to have the confidence to, to take these inspired ideas and, and, and really go out and, and make a positive change and, and uh, be successful in their personal and business life. So I do want to talk about the website. I have been to the website. I did watch the videos, but I just want to come back just for a second. You know, we are in this pandemic situation. Um, so this is a, what, what I would imagine is a hard concept for people to kind of grasp right now. It's just like, just center yourself a little bit and, and let's, let's find some focus. That's probably very challenging in this time. So maybe I skipped forward a little bit. I, I would say if someone, if you were, if you said, Sean, help me through this process, I would say, okay, Sharon, let's first of all, start with just relaxing, just letting go, clear your mind. And then you work up to getting more ideas. The, it's been my experience, and I'm not medically trained in any form or fashion, but when my mind is, 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 is not in its, its normal zone, I'm not productive. I'm not as productive. Uh, I don't have as many good ideas. So just clearing your mind and letting go. There is something to be said for just letting go and allowing things. Right, right. Now you do have uh, this this website called Powerful Creators. Um, now tell me tell me about the podcast. You already mentioned your partner Fatima, right? Yes. Um, and so you guys came together and you decided to launch this website. So we we had and, and we're still in the startup phase of of many exciting projects that that will you know hopefully be coming in the next uh, few months. And I'm not going to mention anything just, just right this second, but we just launched our Powerful Creators Club. And so basically, we give people tips and tools on number one, meditation. Number two, affirmations. Number three, um, just a, a community. We want to bring a community that says, you're not by yourself. We know these are challenging times. And together, we will lift each other. And together, as we move through our process of letting go the things that are holding us down or holding us back or not allowing us to, to, to grow and develop as well as we could, then we naturally will increase the ability to have great ideas, the ability to produce more in a business setting, the ability to be a better parent, the ability to do anything you want to do. Fatim and I feel like it's very important to come to that from a centered manner. Okay, so let's talk about meditation in the business for a minute. If, if you're somebody like me, um, who whose thoughts can be all over the place, um, you wake up in the morning, how do you suggest we start? Like, what is, what is the first thing you should do if you're like, I'm gonna meditate for five minutes? Do it. <laughs> what should I be thinking about? Should I be thinking about something in particular? So that's a great question. And there are some, some really great guided meditations and Fatima has some, and, and there's many, many apps and, and YouTube. There's a lot of great resources there. What most people don't realize is that you don't have to be a monk looking at a brick wall for four years to understand and use meditation. So if you can just go in and close your eyes, listen to your air conditioner, and just be aware and not try to control your thoughts. Uh, just be aware that you're there and you're in a place where you're secure, you're resting, and you're just letting go. If you have a thought come into your mind, let it come in. 
Don't hold it. Don't examine it. Just let it go back out. The five minutes is going to go by very, very quickly. You'll want to come back and go 10, 15 minutes more. Um, but it's really, really beneficial. And it's not as complicated as people think that it needs to be or should be or really is. And you're, you're saying to people, you know, a little bit of meditation will really open up the creativity piece of your brain and will allow you to do bigger business ideas, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, if you, you have your, your, as humans, as, as the human race, we have our, our abilities, we have our communities, and we can multiply our productivity. What can we multiply that by? Our ideas, our technology, what increases the, the, the uh, viability of our natural resources? Technology. If we add more technology, now all of a sudden our car engine doesn't get 10 miles to the gallon, it gets 50 miles to the gallon. So technology has taken that resource and stretched it. And so ideas, inspired ideas are the same thing. Okay. All right. That, that, I, that, I understand that piece of it. So you're a believer in manifesting your destiny. Yes. Um, and this includes financial success and profitability. So can you share with me a time when you used this and you manifested something that actually worked for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in business as a sales professional, which I am as well, I used to work really, really hard chasing prospects, uh, making calls to people that had no interest in my product or service. As I began to focus on my perfect client, I began noticing that I crossed paths with these clients much more easily. I, I'm, I have my phone rings. I don't do any marketing at all, uh, other than the, the powerful creators, obviously, as a, as a new startup, we do, you know, marketing and whatnot. But since as a sales professional, when you have um, someone that has a property that needs renovation, and you're thinking about that person, and you met them a couple of years ago, and you're thinking, I don't know why I'm thinking about... Uh, uh, Joe Smith that, that, that has this property in, in uh, wherever, uh, Las Vegas or, or wherever he may be. I met him at a trade show. Why am I thinking of him? So at that point, you would call Joe and say, hey, how are things going? How are you doing? I'm not trying to sell anything. How are you doing? And so I do that a lot in my uh, business, which is real estate. And the next thing you know, Joe says, you know, Sharon, um, I don't, uh, don't know why you're calling, but I was thinking about you too. I talked to Doug Jones and he said he needs a procurement specialist immediately. And these are the things that happen. Uh, basically, if you are in alignment with who your customers are, it's much easier to manifest those customer relationships if you allow yourself to cross paths with them in, in a specific uh, specific. Everything specifically, everything in the world, you, we think about things that we want. Everything in the world is owned or controlled or managed by a person. So if we can attract people, we can attract the things that those people need help with, that need our help with. And if we provide good service, like I know all high level people do that have been in any sort of business, any sort of amount of time, you provide high level of service, those people then refer you to other people. And so the manifestation process just basically makes it easier for us to cross paths with people that need our products and services or know somebody that needs our product and services. Right. All right. So now I have to ask you, Sean, this sounds very new age. Um, did you, how did, like, how did you build this into your, to your sales? Like, did you wake up one morning and you're like, there's got to be a better way? Did you attend a class? Did you meet somebody? Like, how did this come into your being? That's a really great uh, question, Sharon. And the answer is, when I was younger, I worked really, really, really hard. There was nobody that was going to outwork me. I had my nose to the grindstone all the time. And as I developed and grew older and wiser, 
I realized that the harder I worked trying to convince people that I was not in alignment with to, to do business with me, buy or sell or whatever, I found that, okay, if I just take a more Zen approach to this, that the customers will come to me. And when they do come, I say, hello. I say, you know, obviously to begin with some questions, but the, 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 the way I discovered this was just looking back into my younger career, the younger Sean in his career, working very, very hard, earning very, very little. And now the, the, the wiser Sean that doesn't work that hard, that has people calling and, and bringing opportunities to, to serve them and as well uh, bring abundance to, to myself and my family. So it's looking back. If you have the, the, the benefit of, of being able to look back, and I try not to look back too much, but we look back and say, okay, too little effort and you don't get anywhere. Too much effort and you don't have time for any ideas. So there's a blend. There is an alignment there. I'm not saying sit around in the hammock and, and wait for your cell phone to call with people bringing you million dollar uh, opportunities. That's not how it goes. We're, we're in the market. We're busy. We're doing things. But we, have, we, we get to a point, or I have gotten to a point where I know and expect that people will call me with business. I know and expect that I'll have ideas uh, for businesses. Uh, I know and expect that I'll be able to serve more people. And if I have a more Zen outlook on thing, a more mystical new age way of looking at it, then I'm having faith. I'm basically what you're, we're distilling that down to is having faith. And then as you have faith, you get this momentum behind you where you don't have to have faith anymore. You know that that's going to happen. Right. And you said something I think is very important to reiterate. You're not sitting around on your fingers waiting for the phone. You're preparing yourself for the opportunity so that when it does come, you're ready. Exactly. Exactly. And, and a really great uh, example is I'm busy during uh, my day and a really wonderful lady, Sharon Cope, call or emails me and says, would you like to come on my podcast? And I said, well, of course. Well, yeah, <laughs> so you're delightful. As, let, let's, yes, I'm going to be very delightful on your podcast. That's awesome. <laughs> so, and, and, and I was, I was, I was in the field, if, if, if we used a farmer analogy, I was spreading seeds in the field. I was doing business. I was I was planting, I was harvesting, I was preparing the soil. And as this opportunity came along, I said, yes, of course. And so this now will hopefully bring some enlightenment to your listeners and some new ways of looking at, at doing business. So who knows where, where one, one thing leads, we're busy, we're engaged, and we're still open to saying yes uh, and, and, and bringing additional opportunities into to our, our day. That's awesome. Okay. Well, I have a couple more questions. I just wanted to, to, to kind of check in with you. You do talk about entrepreneurship. And mm -hmm. I do think it is something that I hold near and dear because I am a small business owner. Um, and I come from the hospitality field. And as you know, hospitality took a major hit over the pandemic. So there are a lot of people trying to get on their feet and create something from basically nothing during this. So like, you know, what do you, what advice do you give them if you, if you are out there and you are just opening your, hanging your shingle, uh, you know, what would you tell them? So the very first thing I would tell someone is find what makes your heart sing. Obviously I can just see the sparkle in your eyes when you talk about hospitality and, and the business of procurement and, and helping clients and making connections and, and making friends in business and in, in personal relationship. If you do what makes your heart sing, it makes those 12, 14, 18 hour days sing by, and it's not even like you're working. So find, if, if you're lucky enough to find what makes your heart sing, everything else is details. A lot of people I think today have a hard time having faith that they will be able to do what they like to do and be able to make a living with it. And it's just a matter of trying to connect with the right people and being able to have enough experience where you can find some things that, that would make your uh, life really, really wonderful as a vocation. And a lot of people, 
uh, are finding themselves exactly as you mentioned, mentioned Sharon, with a with a with a midlife uh, second, third, fourth career, and um, one of the one of a really successful person that uh, that I heard speak one time. He said, "You need to be willing and able to reinvent yourself every ten years." So even if we are successful, have we plateaued? Could we do some different things or could we do things different and take ourselves to the next level with enjoyment, with camaraderie, with finances, with, with uh, cash flow? So that's really where I would say if someone said, Sean, and, and I do mentor people, and I, that's the first thing that I would say is, what do you like to do? What, if, if you didn't have to worry about money, what would you do every day? And if someone is an artist, I would say, hey, go do your art. If someone loves poetry, I would say, go write poetry. Even if you can't make a living at your desired and your perfect vocation today, do it. Take that inspired action and then look for opportunities. Pay your bills. You may not live in the Taj Mahal. You may have to start out or restart in a, in a more modest uh, means. But look for opportunity. Look for ways to serve people. If you serve people, they will give you money and they will refer you to their friends. Serve, do what you love. Those are, I think, the most important thing for someone that's re or finds themselves looking for a new career. It's fantastic advice. Give me the um, address of the website. Our website is uh, powerfulcreators.net. Perfect. All right, and, then, and should anybody want to reach out to you, what's the best way to get you? Yes, uh, definitely reach out to me uh, on the website, uh, powerfulcreators.net. There is a, um, uh, we have a, a, a question answers. Also, I am on Instagram at Sean underscore Michael underscore McDonald. So um, be happy to answer any questions and uh, um Look forward to lifting other people. Thank you very much for doing this. It's, it was really interesting. You brought a whole different perspective that I think people will really enjoy listening to. Thank you so much, Sharon, for having me. And uh, what you're doing is, is really, really amazing because this is not a niche that everybody looks at, but it's definitely a niche. Hospitality is, is, a, is a business inside of a real estate investment. And it's just a puzzle that has to be constantly manipulated. And people that are good at that I really, I really uh, have a lot of respect for. Thank you, Sean. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Sharon.